Welcome, my name is Pastor Justin Morris with the Pentecostal Evangelical Church, and today we're studying about Rebecca. But first I wanted to find out, what did you think about that Pitch of Praise song, uh, Lord, I Lift Your Name? I like the way they arranged that. And if you do too, and you're looking for some kind of bouncy praise, kind of lift my spirits during this time, definitely check that out. Go on to iTunes and look up Petra Praise Volume 2, Lord, I Lift Your Name, and you'll see this the CD cover there. And uh, they've got a great a lot of great music. And so definitely check that out. Um, so we're going to go right into prayer requests. And I'm going to tell you, if you have a prayer request, definitely email me at morris.pec at gmail.com. I'm going to tell you that... I seriously do pray for those. When I receive those emails, I drop everything right then and there after I get done reading and I say a prayer right then and there. And there's two things I do that. The reason why I do that is number one, when I'm telling you that I'm going to do it, I've made you a promise. And I've also made, and number two, I've also made a promise to God that I would go on your behalf. And when people don't do that, that's just a bunch of junk, okay? I think that when people say, oh, yeah, I'll be praying for you, brother, and they walk away and they don't do it, they're lying to you and they're lying to God. And so um, I'm telling you right now, if you email me your prayer request, I will absolutely do it. I don't care if you're watching this five years down the road and I get an email, I will stop. And you, you say, hey, Pastor Morris, I remember when back on May 14th of 2020, that you said you'd pray at, at a drop of a hat, okay? Uh, I will do it even five years down the road if you're watching this five years down the road. I will do it, okay? And so as God is my witness, I will pray for you, all right? So definitely send me your prayer request. All right, so I've got a few prayer requests for you. I just set up a gig to where I can go to the assistant living home here in my local town set up outside of the French doors um, into the dining facility, play my guitar and sing for these people and run a speaker into them so they can hear it to be able to do that for thir three 30 minute sessions. This is a way I can give back to them because you know, they're in the assisted living home. Their families really can't come and see them unless they're outside and, and wave at them. And um, it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. And they're, they can't even eat uh, meals together inside there. They've, the nurses have to take their foods to their rooms. And that's really just too much isolation for these people. So I worked it out next Tuesday, which I think is the 19th of May. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there and play my guitar and sing to those people. So I'll start out with some old stuff like Johnny Cash, you know, stuff that they, uh, they remember. And then we'll do some uh, hymns like... Amazing Grace and, and Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, you know, and then I'll, I'll just uh, witness a little bit about Christ there and, uh, and then sp spread the gospel. And so I encourage you to, to try to think of something. Maybe you play piano or maybe you just want to, uh, you know, set up something like that to where you can do that for other people. You know, brainstorm and the Lord will give you an idea, okay? All right, so, and I'll, and I'll put that video on one of my uh, preaching videos. And so to let you know how that went, okay? Okay, hopefully, you know, I'd set it up for Monday, but Monday is supposed to be raining. And we get a lot of wind here in the Columbia Basin, and um, I'm hoping there's no wind. <laughs> so I'll be praying about that, okay? Um, okay, I also uh, wanna be praying for all my YouTube friends out there that I am praying in the name of Jesus. I just pray that right now you... Your spirits are uplifted, and God just puts a spirit of enthusiasm inside of you right now. I also want to pray for President Trump and his team. Uh, I, you couldn't pay me any amount of money to be in politics right now. There is so much drama there, and I just praise the Lord because I want to have fun in my job. And if I'm not having fun, I don't want to do it. Okay? <laughs> so uh, politics would not be fun for me. All right. Hey, we're going to jump right into Rebecca. And I'm pretty excited. Um, you know, I was studying a little bit about uh, her in the Hebrew, and uh, her name means to be captivating. And the Bible says she was pretty. And um, you're going to find out uh, a little bit about that. If you don't know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, okay? <laughs> um, she was born to a man named Bethuel, and this was Abraham's nephew. 
And uh, I just, I couldn't find anything about her mom. I couldn't find out anything about when she was born. Um, I'm gonna, there's a fun fact at the end about her birth, but I'm not gonna tell you right now, so you have to watch, okay? <laughs> um, but uh, the only thing I could find out anything about her mother is in Genesis chapter 24, verse 28, and it says, then the young women ran and told her mother's household about these things. All right, now, if you remember right, this is about Isaac uh, getting a wife, and this is Rebecca, but, this, um, but uh, the servant is being sent by Abraham to go and find a wife for Isaac. And when they find it, uh, then all these women run to the household and tell, tell her mother or tell the mother's household. But that's all I ever found. If you know of who her mother was or when she was born, please put a comment. I would love to know. But make sure you have scripture, okay? All right. If you want to put a speculation, that's okay. But make sure it is speculated, okay? Make sure you say that. It's okay to speculate as long as you're stating it's speculation and not fact. Because when you do that, that becomes a cult, okay? We all know about those things. All right. Um, all right. So, uh, the Bible actually states Rebecca was a virgin. It's very clear. It puts it out there. And it's interesting in the Bible days, it just seems to be more important that the women were virgins, um, than it is today. People really don't even talk about it. They don't even ask the question. You know, we have a lot of people that's converted, you know, in their 20, late twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, you know, to Christianity. So whatever they did in their past is their business and whatever. Um, and, uh, but, you know, uh, especially young women in the Bible days, it just seems to be very prevalent that they are considered a virgin when they're married. And so um, it's just it's just really interesting that the Bible really just puts a, and a virgin, and a virgin, you know, it's, it's very much in, indwelled in there. Um, so anyways, okay, who was she? Well, she was Isaac's second cousin. That doesn't seem to be a problem in the Bible. There's a lot of second cousins married. And the more I studied it, uh, the more I realized that it was because it was within the tribe. So you really didn't have the Hittites marrying into the Canaanites or the Canaanites marrying into the Shitzites or uh, the Shitzites marrying into the, the, the Bleakites. You know, I, I'm making that up now. But <laughs> what I'm saying is you didn't really have that cross or you weren't, you really wasn't welcomed that way because you ended up having cross-culture things happening, and that was never any good, okay, for the most part. And so when you married within your tribe, it was really kind of hard not to marry a second or third or fourth cousin. And so we just hear about that a lot. In this day and age, we don't do it. We just don't do it. It's just kind of taboo. And so um, Isaac and Rebecca had twin sons together, and that was Esau, Esau and Jacob. We, we know about that. And... Um, but she didn't have children right away. See, she was barren. And so in, uh, in Genesis 25, 21, uh, it says that Rebecca was barren. So Isaac prayed to God and God granted that. So let's read it. And Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his prayer and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Now, he did something his father didn't do. Remember Abraham and Sarah, they got impatient. And so uh, Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham. They had Ishmael. Well, that didn't work out so well. Ishmael was hated by everybody, but he, he brought that on himself and yada, yada, yada. We can go on that. But see, Isaac and Rebecca, they waited on the Lord. And then the Lord gave them the first set of twins that's mentioned in the Bible. That's kind of cool, you know, to be the first. So that was a, that was a blessing in, in disguise there. But in verse 22, it actually says that they, uh, they fought in the womb, okay? And it says, the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it is thus, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. What's going on inside of me here? <laughs> uh, when she asked Lord what was going on, he spoke a prophecy to her and he said, you have two nations inside of you, okay? Now, let's read verse 23 because there's a little bit more here. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you shall be divided. 
Okay, and this hasn't changed since then. From that time to now, those two nations are still divided. Okay, the one shall be stronger than the other. And get this, the older shall serve the younger. Okay, and we've seen this before in the story of Joseph with the coat of many colors. He was like one of the youngest and he, <clears throat> his brothers bowed down to him. Da, 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 da. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> I don't want to get off track because I do get off track. But we've seen this before. Okay. Um, all right. So how old was Isaac when the twins were born? Do you know? That's right. You're right. He was 60 years old. The same age President Trump was when he had his youngest son, Baron. So <laughs> that's a fun fact. All right, you, see, and you can find this in verse 26, not about President Trump, but about Isaac being 60 years old, all right? All right, so let's talk about Isaac's sister wife. What? Yeah, Isaac's sister wife. You remember that? His sister, wife, well, whatever. Um, okay, <laughs> in uh, Genesis 26, verse 6 through 11, the story goes that Isaac and Rebekah had settled in this place called Gur, G-E-R-A-R. -R. And I put a map up here because I really liked for you to have some visual of where these places were in the Old time, Old Testament times. And so you can see it's in the land of Judah, and it is west of the Dead Sea and south of Jerusalem and, and Bethlehem. Okay, so they settled here, and um, when the men of the city noticed Rebecca, they're like, woo, look at that, woo, la la, ooh la la, you know, that's kind of an old thing. <laughs> um, and so uh, when they asked about it, Isaac's like, uh, yeah, that's my sister. And so um, they, uh, they kind of played that off for a while. Well, uh, King Amalek noticed one day, looked out the window, and noticed that they were laughing together. And he's like, yeah, they're not brother and sister, they're husband and wife. They were like a little too, getting a little too close to be sister, uh, brother and sister here. So he, he asked them, hey, why did you lie to us and say she was your sister? And he says, well, I thought you guys were going to kill me. And take take her away from me if I told her it was her wife. And he goes, you know, if a man would have laid with her, you know what would have happened? We'd all been in trouble. Our old, God would have, you know, been mad at us. Well, <clears throat> so what he does in verse 26 through um, chapter 26, verse 11, this is what it says. So Amalek, King, or Amalek warned all the people, saying, Whoever touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. So he made it very clear. Do not touch either one of these people. All right. All right. So they go ahead and, and put down roots there. They farm. They make a lot of money. I mean, they make massive. The Lord blesses them for whatever reason because he lied. But how many times have we lied and done things that we shouldn't have done and the Lord still blesses us? Okay. But in the Old Testament... It just didn't seem to work that way. We weren't under the new covenant of grace and Jesus and the mercies and everything. In the Old Testament, you did something, man, it happened. You got in trouble right then and there. Well, uh, God blesses uh, Isaac and Rebekah to the point where they become super wealthy. So wealthy, Kima Amlak tells them to leave because they're... Hey, you're too wealthy for us. You need to leave, okay? So him and his wife, Rebecca, they take off. They leave. Um, so anyways, uh, in chapter 27 of Genesis, we're going to jump back in more to Rebecca here, okay? Kind of kind of got off a little off there, but I want to uh, give you a little teaser. Maybe you can go read that because it's really a good read. Uh, Rebecca actually favored Jacob more than Esau only because... Isaac favored Esau more than Jacob, and I feel that she uh, felt sorry for Jacob. And, you know, I'm kind of looking at this, and, you know, Esau's the rugged guy. He's a fisherman, the hunter. He goes to Bass Pro Shops, and he's like the outdoorsy guy. And that's probably why Isaac liked him a little bit. I don't know. I don't know why he did. But um, the Bible says that Jacob kind of stu stuck around the tent, so he was kind of probably the more the cooker the the mender the you know he goes to joanne's and you know buy you know, i don't know uh you know, probably just a little bit more feminine than esau was but um but any, anyhow whatever it was bible doesn't really get too in depth on on that we know he got married jacob got married so he wasn't he wasn't that way but 
Um, but she feels sorry for him and she protects him and she babies him. And, um, she actually helped, uh, uh, him deceive her husband by putting on the hairs on his and to receive the blessing. Uh, Jacob also steals the birthright from Esau. We know all about that. And so, um, and you can read all about this in the whole chapter uh, from chapter 20, uh, 27, one through 40. And um, she actually helps him escape Esau's, uh, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and he meant it. Okay. This is, you know how brothers fight, well, I'm going to kill you. And they start, you know, going struggling and everything. And it's just words, you know, but this Esau was mean in it. I mean, he was mad because he lost pretty much everything because of Jacob. Well, she helps him escape, all right? Um, but through all this, God honors uh, Isaac's request to have kids, you know, through this. And God knew all this was going to happen. And so uh, that's pretty cool. Even though Rebecca was deceitful in some things, he still said, I'm still going to give you kids, and you're still going to have to live through this. <laughs> Could all have been good. We don't know the whole story, or the Bible would be about this thick, you know. Um, anyways, let's jump ahead. There's not much more that talks about Rebecca until the end, okay? And so we know Rebecca was died, and she was buried in the field of Ephron the Hittite in a place called Machpelah. Machpelah, I think that's how you pronounce it. And it was in a cave, according to. If you read in Genesis chapter 49, uh, verses 29 through 31. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go the um, go right to the Bible. How many of you actually read one of these things? Okay, I do. Okay, um, let's go to that. And uh, because it's in small print, I got to take my glasses off to here. <laughs> Looking like an old man here. Um, verse 29, then he charged them and said to them, and this is, um, uh, okay, I am to be gathered to my, this is Jacob, okay, I am to be gathered to my people, bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephraim the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mara, Mamra in the land of Canaan which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron, the Hittite, as a possession for a burial place. Verse 31, there they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. Okay, so we know that the scripture gives a specific place of where Rebekah was, was dead and buried. All right. We don't know when, though. I still don't have an idea of when that was. I look up on my Bible timeline. I can't find it. Okay. All right. So fun fact time. I love this. Okay. You're going you're gonna to love this. I, I found this this morning. I'm like, what? What are these people thinking? <laughs> okay. According to an article written in Discover the Truth, dated October 26, 2016, Rabbis in the medieval history state that Rebecca was three years old when she married Isaac. Or, excuse, um, yeah. And I'm like, what in the world? Okay. <laughs> um, three years old. And, and a second earlier, a source puts her at age 10. Okay. What, what are the people thinking? Okay. Uh, this has all been discounted um, as a great source. Uh, later on, but if you want to read uh, a really good analogy of how people are trying to figure out when her birth took place and, and all this, um, you can, here's a website you can go to. However, if you can't remember all of that, just Google, was Rebecca a child of three years when Isaac married her? Google that, and the, and the website simplybible.com will come up. Click on that one, and there's this awesome layout that they do that they're trying to come close to figuring out when she was born. And everything. Bottom line, who really cares? The story's still fact um, because it's in the Bible, but I, I really love to do research, and this might be a great research for you. So if you're like me, definitely check it out. Okay, hey, uh, soon I will bring that video of me playing guitar for those people, and uh, just be praying about no wind 
and no rain, okay? <laughs> Have a great day. We'll talk to you later.